Hello, this is Nico with the Dotscapes project. Today I'm going to demonstrate the analytical features of the Scapes platform. Uh, we have a couple of, uh, of tools available uh, in our public alpha that uh, illustrate some of the capacity we've been developing here at uh, the University of Wisconsin Center for Sustainability in the Global Environment. So of the three tools currently active, Find, Analyze, and Share, our analyzed tools are the most developed. We've been working extensively on them uh, for the past couple of years. And the goal is to allow our users to explicitly see the underlying code in uh, some health uh, analyses or analyses for any other discipline. Uh, we currently support Python and R. And uh, let's get started. So clicking on the an uh, Analysis tab, you'll see the steps. Uh, drag a geolytic tool from the sidebar to the analyzer. And configured parameters and then run the tool. Well in order to see your sidebar first you have to log on and we use um, Google authentication to do so so you need a, a Gmail account. In this case I've uh, already logged on so it's bringing up uh, my tab, uh, my sidebar. Um, so the first step is to drag a geolytic tool from the sidebar to the analyzer. Well there aren't currently any tools in my sidebar so we have to go find some. So opening the find tab I'm going to um, look for a tool and uh, I'm going to use the aggregate tool which is a core tool for aggregating points within a polygon as you can see from this list it's written in Python this tool would be useful for counting the number of, uh, of samples in a in a state or for generating a chloropleth map etc so we've only got a few tools uh, that we're demoing at this early stage uh, we've developed a number of tools and we'll slowly be rolling them out um, so let's grab the aggregate tool and drag it over to our tool tab and let's take a look at it. So behind the scenes um, we have a Python script um, demonstrating some of the geo capabilities of programming with Python um, and the outputs from this uh, will be a um, a graph uh, a graph sort of bar chart as well as a chloroplath map and a table. So you can browse through the code to see how we generate some of that. Um, as we progress, we'll eventually allow people to fork that code and uh, develop their own. That's a little further down the road. So let's close this out and let's grab the aggregate tool and drag it into the analysis tab. So it looks like we need two types of maps, a boundary map and a point map. Um, so let's go looking for some maps. Um, one of our primary case studies is Brazil. So we'll put in the Brazil keyword and we see some maps are available here. Uh, let's grab the malaria map and drag it into our map tab and let's grab a population map to get a polygon. Uh, again, um, a reflection of the alpha, we're developing a tool that will uh, provide some of the metadata behind these maps, tell you a little more about them. For now, uh, this is a proof of concept. So we've got the malaria points, we've got the Brazil points, let's take a look at them. So the malaria points are a series of, uh, of samples of mean malaria counts uh, from across Brazil. Uh, mean malaria counts are what we're interested in here. And the Brazil population map is a series of polygons outlining uh, the states in Brazil. So you could select some of those states to see uh, uh, what they correspond to on the map um, by clicking through our attribute uh, table at the bottom. So let's now try to count how many of these points are within each of these polygons. So we go back to our analytical tool. Now we've selected two maps. We'll grab the population map as a boundary map and uh, aggregate on the administrative names. So when we hear the admin names, we're the names of the states. So any states without any points, such as these ones, uh, will get no value. The population map we'll use, or sorry, the point map will be malaria and let's configure how we want to aggregate. So we want the mean malaria counts. We want to generate an output aggregating within the polygons and counting. Um, again, we'll uh, keep rolling out uh, future versions of this tool uh, to make it more intuitive and we appreciate any input along the way. So we can say we're done. Um, and then let's give it a title. So we're going to look at malaria versus state. So the x-axis will be state, and the y will be malaria counts. Okay, now when I click Submit, 
it should return three types of figures. We've got a malaria versus state uh, SVG chart, uh, which you can scroll through to see uh, various values. So it looks like of all the states, we have the highest number of counts for Maranhao. Then we also provide an HTML table um, where you could um, get the, the precise numbers for the various states. So M uh, uh, how we can see uh, some of the values calculated for Um Now, one of the more interesting outputs is a chloroplath map where we aggregate the number of points within a polygon. Um, so here we are seeing um, that the highest number of counts are here along the coast, which is simply a reflection of where the samples are from and where the population centers are. But this tool we hope will be useful for uh, getting a summary of, of, uh, of the data set and or uh, providing some simple counts for the coverage of a point data set. So that's the analytical tool. Um, other tools uh, are available within the Find tab, um, selecting uh, tools. And uh, we've got some basic compartment models from an EcoHealth workshop at Johns Hopkins, developed by Paris Hosseini. And uh, we'll be adding more tools as we progress. Uh, the majority here are in R, some are in Python. Um, to, for a demonstration of an SIR model, um, we could drag that over to our toolbar. And you can see the code has generates a simple compartment model. And we use these features here, these user parameters, in order to allow users to interact with those parameters. So another way, as opposed to dragging the analytic tab, is to run the tool. And here we could set some values, a beta and a gamma. And you could uh, peruse the code to get a better sense of what those values reflect. And it'll generate an SIR compartment model showing uh, susceptible, uh, infected, and recovered uh, populations. So that's a brief overview of the analytic tool. Uh, we have a number more on the way. Uh, we hope you stay tuned and check back in with us as uh, the platform progresses towards uh, beta. Thank you very much.